All right, so now we're moving to uh, some great music. And again, I have three guests here. Um, what we've been able to do is film some of the UT Jazz Orchestra's concerts. So we filmed uh, not last Friday's concert. We didn't turn it around that fast, but we filmed some concerts in the fall. And then we came up with some of the best material from that, uh, really edited it nicely video and audio wise. And today's class is all about you. Uh, you're gonna drive a lot of the class today, so please Ask any questions that you'd like, either about the music that you hear or about my guests here. Dave Sayers is going to be banking those questions using the Ask a Professor button, and we'll be answering a lot of those during our kind of extended interplay at the end of class today. So please uh, react to the music, uh, and anything, feel free to give us any feedback you have about the music or anything you'd like to know from my fine guests today. All right, and our first guest is, as I mentioned, Dr. John Mills, Professor of Jazz Studies at the Butler School of Music. He's a jazz saxophonist and a jazz flutist and a great jazz composer in addition to having all many other skills. He's a composer in many idioms, so uh, if you've uh, heard a Specs commercial or maybe <laughs> Hannah Chevalier. <laughs> find a small one. Yeah, right, there's uh, Dr. Mills there too, <laughs> and in all other kinds of idioms too. So he's a remarkable musician in person. So we're gonna uh, talk to John a little bit and then we'll listen to a piece of his music. So uh, let's start out with what attracted you to jazz in the first place. Well, I, I had the opportunity to hear a lot of different kinds of music growing up around my household, everything from uh, classical music to pop music and to jazz. And I was always attracted by the harmony of the music. Before I knew what harmony really was, underneath the melody, I was tracing this other movement that I found really fascinating. And uh, I ended up going to the piano without any particular instruction, just looking for those sounds that I heard in um, all kinds of music and uh, sometimes discovered things in my search. I could maybe never found what I was looking for that I was trying to duplicate, but I found something else. And uh, of course, I was also interested in the, uh, the rhythmic nature of all kinds of music. And I felt like jazz had the best combination of that harmonic interest, that kind of fascinating harmonic movement and the rhythm. So I love all kinds of music, but jazz puts those things together in a very special way. Yeah, cool. I, I agree with you mm -hmm. totally about that. Uh, let's talk about what it's like to compose and arrange for a big band. Uh, the process, and I know that's a very complicated question. You know, that's a lifelong process, and I'm going to ask you to give kind of a short answer to that and also talk maybe a little bit about what's different and similar between actually just writing music and then arranging it for a large jazz ensemble like the Jazz Orchestra. Well, there's a sort of a, a line between where uh, composition, where it's all your original thoughts and your original chord progression and every bit of it is just coming from you, to an arrangement where essentially you're taking somebody else's work and adapting it for a particular instrumentation, for a particular setting. And, you know, there's a, there's a line in between there where the cross from comp composition to arranging you know, it gets a little ambiguous where one stops and the other starts. Uh, when you are arranging, you still inevitably uh, invent, compose things like, you know, specific counter lines in the saxophones, for instance, or the, the alternate chords in the brass. So in a way, you always take over a little bit and become a bit of a composer. But the arranger is essentially taking somebody else's work, giving it a new treatment. Maybe you could compare it to somebody doing a, a remake of a film or taking a, a book and turning it into a movie. You know, it, it's, it has another source, whereas uh, with composition, you're the, you're the novelist, you're the film director, you're all those things. <laughs> Right, yeah, great. So uh, when you're, uh, would it be accurate for your, uh, us to say that when you're composing a piece for the jazz orchestra or preparing something for it, you would write the music, the basic sketch first with just kind of the harmonies and the melody and the rhythms and then apply it to the instruments later? That's yeah. true. Uh -huh. I, I would compare it maybe to uh, somebody making a sketch of a, uh, maybe drawing you know, buildings or something where the broad outlines and the shapes and the positioning is all set first and then the last stage of the process is applying maybe the watercolors. Color, right, yeah. The colors and, and maybe some fine-tuning some things. So there's definitely a preliminary stage where the basic elements of the piece are put into play and the finishing touch is sort of transferring that to the score, getting into the specifics, the nuts and bolts of how you want to move between the different instruments and that sort of thing. Yeah, right. Thanks for that. So let's talk about your piece that's coming up here, Fragments of Your Imagination. Uh, this one, like many of your compositions, uh, you've definitely established an identity as a composer and, and I think a big part of that identity are the catchy 
catchy rhythms that you create, and they're uh, very interesting. They're also challenging for the players. Uh, you mentioned rhythm already when we were talking mm -hmm. earlier today. So can you talk about some of your rhythmic influences or some of the rhythms that uh, influence or affect your writing? Well, well you know, with, with jazz always being sort of very aware of its history and its traditions, but also sort of moving forward, uh, I like the combination of taking the, the instruments of jazz tradition, uh, some of those harmonies, and maybe update the rhythmic setting into maybe some kind of rhythmic grooves that could only happen in 2017. <laughs> I, that's what I'm searching for, whether I get it or not. And uh, there's an element of the multiple syncopations that go on at once in the music I like to write, and I think it's a reflection of the way that even uh, like a jazz quartet behaves, even if they're playing a simple jazz standard, the drummer's playing cross rhythms and the pianist is uh, catching certain accents and the bass player is doing variations and the, the soloist is playing you know, a variety of rhythms. And all that going on is actually quite complex and I'm sort of transferring all that rhythmic energy that's inherent in a spontaneous jazz performance into a scored sure. yeah, arrangement. Very, yeah. very cool. Well, that's definitely one of the things that we want to be listening for as we watch and listen to fragments coming up. Do you have another tip or two of something else we might want to listen for or check out while we're yeah. watching this video? One thing that I think is sort of a uh, way jazz started moving maybe back in the 70s was evolving past necessarily having a 32 bar form like most of the jazz standards and the idea that instead of having that AABA cycle as the sort of the the arc of the music uh, to have a much longer story so kind of keep count of all the different passages I, separate sections you hear before the piece makes its full cycle and it's it may take a minute and a half two minutes before you get through all the stages well, right mm -hmm. very cool yeah thanks for that so in just a moment we're going to be listening to fragments of your imagination uh and please ask questions if you like you know yeah and then uh we'll get to those we get to the interplay and when we come back from fragments we'll be with brian Kennard, who's a master student in jazz composition we'll be talking about his piece so hope you enjoy the ut jazz orchestra playing john mills's fragments of your imagination <laughs> Thank you. 